check. Get all that language, check. Greek mythology and Shakespeare as well. I've got the best political tag team, no doubt, on TV. On the far end, my man, who we've just created a Twitter handle for. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's official. <laughs> Dr. PLO Lumumba's Twitter handle is now It's PLO. I-T apostrophe S, PLO. It's PLO. Start tweeting. See if it works. Man in the middle, publisher, journalist, political analyst. He wrote in last Saturday's uh, Standard, great story about the body language, which he has studied, of one Deputy President William Ruto during the cabinet reshuffle. We'll talk about it. Barack with the two R's, Maluka. His Twitter handle is at Barack M. Mine, at Kananga Jeff. The hashtag we're using tonight, State of the Nation. Start tweeting. Include PLO, please, or he'll feel left out. <laughs> Gentlemen, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Fantastic. Asante, Asante. Asante. Look, um, let's start with a botched drill at Strathmore. That was pretty pathetic. PLO, that was, that was communication gone bad, if you will. Jeff, the intentions were good, the intentions were noble, but the message we draw from that is that when you want to engage in such an exercise, ensure that you have the experts involved. It is sad that a life was lost and limbs were broken mm. in what was intended to be an exercise that would ensure that that does not happen in the event of a real terrorist attack. And I'm quite certain the university has come out, the vice chancellor, Professor Diambo has come out, and the university officials have come out and apologized. But the message is one and is clear. Get professionals involved, ensure that it doesn't happen again, and I hope that we have learned something from it. Yeah, Barack, because... Um if people are using live ammunition, live bullets, that's a little scary. But at the same time, we are a scared nation. We are scared. Anything freaks us out because of what's mm. happened mm. in the past. Mm. Westgate, Garissa University, Mandera, and on and on, and Mbeketoni. We're a scared nation. Yeah, it's very, very worrying when you are hearing that even the head of the institution was unaware, the head of uh, the police force was unaware, very many people who ought to have known did not know anything about it. It's very, very worrying. And I agree completely with uh, my brother PLO. Everything should be left uh, to professionals. There are people who have uh, even taken it to the extent of trivia and said whether it's uh, drinking uh, alcohol mm. or being romantic, it had better be left to professionals. <laughs> Indeed. I was about to say, what would Magufuli do? But I'll save it for later on. <laughs> <laughs> the Magufuli effect. What a man. <laughs> All right. Dr. Pielo, this cabinet reshuffle happening literally hours before the Pope landed. Was that intentional? You know, there is a sense in which we must also claim some credit. We sat on this bench and without being Jewish prophets did say yes. that the president ought to take some action. And to his credit, he has tried to reorganize his administration. But there are things that worry me. The president has appointed individuals. They may be good in their own right in the assessment of the president. But I wonder why the president, in the process of reconstituting his cabinet, would also occasion by elections. Mm. In an economy that is suffering, we'll have a by-election for the Senate, we'll have a by-election for a parliamentary seat. And there is a sense in which the President has a little disappointed me, because we did say that this was an occasion when the President could once again demonstrate that this particular nation has more than two communities. And we must say it again and again, but it appears that the URP TNA duopoly is the thing that drives the president, and that is not very good. It fills and makes the others left out. Yeah. If it was left to me, I would have chosen Kenyans, and there is no shortage of them, who can serve this nation and serve them well. And I would have left my good friend Keter to complete his term as his electorate wanted him to do. Mm. I would have left Kazungu to complete his term. But ultimately, it is the president's prerogative, and if the president, in his wisdom, Thinks that that is what will drive his agenda. Who are we to condemn him? Mm. But we must question him because they serve us. Absolutely. And, and, and Barack, look, uh, you read the body language. The president was there giving the announcement. Right behind him was the deputy president. 
and you read that body language. What did the body language tell you? You know, they talk about something they call uh, meta-linguistics, language above uh, language, above what you are hearing, above what people are, are saying, the pronouncements that they are making. You look at the language, uh, how somebody is behaving, you can see there's a bit of a sneer on the face, you can see that uh, there's a folding of uh, arms, uh, a distancing of uh, oneself uh, from the principal who is making those uh, pronouncements. And you're more or less getting the message that uh, that is yours. We may have uh, sat, we may have materialized from uh, this door together, but essentially that is yours. And I'm listening as a very detached uh, participant. Uh, but uh, beyond that, I think there are some very disturbing things. I, I think there's something about uh, gestures, and you need to go beyond uh, gest gestures and uh, interrogate the materiality of uh, what is being done. Now, here there are a number of uh, flaws. The first one, most fundamental for me, is uh, the shortchanging of uh, women. We know about uh, the two-thirds uh, gender regulation, and which is constitutional. And uh, we see that uh, Article 152, we are talking about um, a cabinet that uh, comprises the president, the deputy president, the attorney general, and between 14 and 22 cabinet uh, secretaries. And uh, the way we get it now is that we have got a cabinet of 23. Effectively, for it to be cabinet, it has got 23. 23, if you have uh, five women, you have shortchanged them. At least uh, we're talking about constitutionalism. And here is a, a case in point where the president's hands are not tied. It's a question of asking whether we have women who are competent. And I don't doubt that we have got enough women who are competent. And therefore, I would expect that uh, we are seeing not less than seven women in this cabinet. Mm. This is something that uh, must be corrected. And it's, it's to be corrected not out of uh, activism or anything like that, but because of the rule of law and the constitution which the president has, which the president who was there before him passed on to him as one of the instruments of power and one which he has sworn that he's going to protect. Mm, indeed. You know, at the same time, two years ago when the president announced the first cabinet, he had said, he and the de de deputy said, no politicians except Balala and Gilu then. And if they come into the, the cabinet, they should shed their politician caps. Now, Mwangi Kyunjuri. You know, there is a question, there is a sense in which this is a real politic cabinet. The president, in my view, is looking to 2017. And, mm -hmm. and what he's trying to do is to constitute a cabinet that will inform that agenda. And there is a sense in which, if you remember, my good friend Mwangi Kiunjuri had very great spurts with Charity Kaluki Ngilu when they served together in the Ministry of Water. And there is a sense in which he believes, I think, that this is an individual who is battle-hardened and will be able to absorb some of the blows that he's going to receive from the opposition and other interlocutors and detractors. So he's the attack dog? I think he is an individual. And remember that he's been given the docket of devolution, which is very important because it gives him an opportunity to interact with other politicians, the governors. And the president must take the view mm. that this is the individual who is sufficiently uh, strong, strong enough to do battle with this individual that I had somebody who described him herself as a technocrat, did not do a very good job. Going to the battle of 2017, I think that this is an individual who is going to deliver. There are those who also think that this is an individual who aboriginally is from central province <laughs> but has now reset, settled in yes. Rift Valley and he is therefore ensuring that he is using a single stone to hit two birds. Ah. And I think that is what must have informed the president's decision in this regard. Yeah. yeah. Dan Kazungu, good choice? I'm not so sure. I think uh, here is a question of uh, a calculated uh, gamble. Uh, perhaps you want somebody from the coast. Uh, you also want somebody who is not uh, extremely polarizing because there are certain political giants at uh, the coast. Mm. Uh, Dan Kazungu would appear to be more of uh, a middle roader, uh, perhaps uh, also weakening the ODM uh, 
uh, for fraternity mm -hmm. at uh, the cost. The taste of uh, that pudding is going to be in uh, its uh, eating uh, eventually. But the fundamental thing here, again, is that uh, Kenyans expected a, a cabinet reshuffle not with eyes uh, trained on 2017, important as that may be to the political class, but for purposes of uh, the kind of uh, reform agenda that we want to see. We, as uh, the people who have given the mandate to the government, are looking at the next two years, and we are looking at the quality of service that we are enjoying from this uh, government. But if you are going to be putting your troops together, forgetting that uh, the clamor for change in government has not been about uh, bringing into the bandwagon people who are going to bring the pulse into the ballot box, but people who are going to give us a Kenya mm. that we can believe in. Yeah. To that extent, we haven't gotten there, and uh, the president must uh, take caution that this does not end up as a game of uh, musical Chairs. Yes, absolutely. PLO, you mentioned a moment ago about uh, devolution ministry, Mwangi Kunjuri, taking over from uh, the resignation, the public resignation, on a Saturday afternoon of the embattled former CS and Waiguru. Was she pushed or did she jump? She was pushed. I think we sat on this very bench mm -hmm. and appealed, uh, almost cajoled, Anwai Guru to leave when it was good to leave. Almost in a Kimunya-esque style, <laughs> without saying so in so many words, yes. she did appear to say, over my dead body. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, it became untenable for her to continue to serve, and it's quite clear that she was pushed, and that is why she says, I'm leaving, but consider me for lighter duties. Yeah. Of course, those lighter duties have not been given to her, but it is quite clear that from the president perspectives our continued presence in the government and in the cabinet was embarrassing and uh, it is uh, therefore uh, it came naturally that at the appropriate time the president's handlers must have said if you continue to have this individual in your cabinet then your fight against corruption will not be seen to be a true fight let her ease her off so that you have an opportunity to reorganize your cabinet, to redefine yourself, to re-energize your fight against corruption and to appear to look good, jettison her, because you now want to move in a totally different yeah. trajectory. Barack, and that is what the yeah. president has Barack, done. you're laughing. You're laughing here. Uh, yes, uh, because you remember, and the viewers there will remember, that uh, we sat on this bench mm. not once, not twice, mm. and we talked about this notion of pre-bendalism. Pre-bendalism. Pre I love it. And when we talked about it, there are those who were elected to be mesmerized by the sound of it. <laughs> but uh, this is not about mesmerizing individuals there with uh, grandiloquent expressions. It's about what it is, about the state, the Kenyan state. To a certain extent, the Kenyan state is a metaphor for the African state. And it's a state whose uh, basic foundational philosophy, whose purpose, whose architecture, whose design is deliberately purposed to be predatory and uh, to be exploitative, to, 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 to be a thieving, kleptocratic state. I think kleptocracy mm. is, the, is, is the right word yeah. eh, from uh, Greek. I know you like Greek. I, I love Greek. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, kleptes for thief, mm -hmm. uh, kratis for power. So that power is basically in the hands, unfortunately, of uh, a thiefing uh, uh, leadership. Okay? And therefore, when we talk about all these uh, changes that we are making, we are talking about uh, uh, p p people being forced out, smoked out, people being compelled to leave, it's basically because they have been doing what they are supposed to be doing. Mm. And that is uh, helping to sustain a kleptocratic, prebendalist state. And I think uh, that um, the shuffling of people from this position to that position and bringing in a few new ones is not uh, quite going to change. What is going to change is the moment when the top is going to be Ruthless. Mm. And ruthlessness here means that uh, PLO is my brother here, my friend, my bosom friend. 
but I've been caught with my hand in the till. In the cookie jar. And he'll tell me, my brother, we come a long way yeah. together. You, you gotta go. But this particular one, no, my brother, you should not even be suspected. Yeah, absolutely. And PLO, if she had resigned earlier on, all this maneno of EACC going to her house and raiding her whatever bedroom, kitchen, everywhere, all that would have been forgotten. It would have been forgotten because at that time we said, take political accountability yes. mm. and ensure that you leave with your dignity intact. As it is now, she is down, but she's being hit because she failed to leave the stage when it was right to leave the stage. Shakespeare was so right. Mm. There is a tide in the affairs of men mm. and it includes women and there is a time to enter the stage and there is a time to leave yeah. no matter how good you are yeah. you must never suffer from what is called the prima donna syndrome the refusal to leave the stage on the ground they are good, mm. good. She well put, well put. Mm. pre, pre bendalism yes what does it mean a uh, pre bendalism we have said uh, is a notion in social science that are those who exercise power, particularly political power, have got as one of their benefits the right to transfer the national treasury into their pockets for their own use. That in a, a society and an environment mm. such as ours in Kenya yeah. and elsewhere in Africa that claims to be a democracy, one of the benefits of winning an election is uh, that you are entitled to corruptly accessing public resources for your own use. Mm. And that even when you look for people whom you are going to appoint into positions of power and responsibility, one of the credentials that they must have when you are doing the background check, because you have to do a mm -hmm. background check, mm -hmm. is that uh, this one is going to be a good one, is going to help us to get money out of the public coffers for our own uh, benefit mm. we can work with him we can work with her yeah now if you do not have those credentials then you don't get there and then the prebendalist state creates the misleading and wrong impression that it is a tribal state you teach the world that this government belongs to such a tribe mm. which you know very well it doesn't it belongs to a certain elite elite class within that tribe and the rest of the tribal population is, uh, shall we say, zombified. Mm. It is zombified to believe that this is actually our government. Yeah. And the purpose of this zombification is so that you become the canon fodder for the ruling class. Mm. Barack, right now I'm zombified to take a break if you don't mind. Okay? Don't, don't be zombified. <laughs> we we'll start from there. <laughs> General, we're going to take a break, come back. Thank the you. Pope. Yes. Pope spoke out. It was great to see him. Did any of you meet him? I saw his aeroplane. <laughs> I was out of town. <laughs> Everybody became a Catholic. All politicians became Catholics. I saw, that is our hypocrisy. I, I, I saw an Italian. <laughs> At It's PLO. He has an official Twitter handle as of tonight. Thank you, Marcus. Make up your mind. At it's PLO Lumumba. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. At it's PLO Lumumba. At Barack M. At Queen Anger Jeff. The hashtag State of the Nation. We are indeed interrogating, dissecting, digesting the events of the past week. By the way, it's a new month, the 12th month of the year. Yes. How quickly um, time No, don't say anything. Okay. <laughs> I hold my peace. <laughs> Jeff Kinaga live. Takes a break. We'll be back. <laughs> <In a moment. laughs>